Um, my name is Gillian Turnbull and I'm here today to chat to you about careers in the equine industry. Um, so I'll just uh, run through the topics that are in my presentation. So first of all, a wee bit about my own background, then the equestrian industry and how it's made up, uh, why you might choose the equestrian industry to work in and what opportunities there are, uh, how you can prepare for the industry, what industry advances there have been, uh, educational courses that you might attend. Um, I do work for SRUC, so I'll focus on the courses that we offer, although there are courses around the country. Um, additional vocational qualifications and then a wee bit about our winners that uh, won an award through Landtrap last year. So my own background is that I did an honours degree in a non-equestrian subject, uh, totally nothing to do with horses. Uh, I then went abroad and worked with horses for a little while and then came back to Scotland to take up a job opportunity where I trained for my British Horse Society exams. Uh, throughout that time I was competing in affiliated eventing and show jumping classes and at the same time started a livery business at home on a part-time uh, part arrangement. I gave up my job and then focused wholly on my business at home and then was offered a role lecturing which I was able to do alongside uh, running my own business and I still do that uh, today and have been for quite a long time. So through my role um, at SIUC, I achieved, achieved my teaching qualification and further education and I'm currently doing a master's qualification alongside my full time job. So that's just a bit of background on where I am in terms of uh, my role in the equestrian industry before I chat to you about the other opportunities. So looking at the equestrian organisations that make up the equestrian industry, in Britain, we have what's called the British, uh, what was called the British Equestrian Federation is now just called British Equestrian. So that makes up uh, the whole of the UK. It's an umbrella body that sits um, overarching uh, the various disciplines that make up um, the equestrian organisations in the, in the industry. So British show jumping, dressage, eventing and so on. In Scotland, we have what's called Horse Scotland, which is a kind of Scottish equivalent, I guess, of the British Equestrian um, Federation. Uh, that is an umbrella body that sits over the Scottish branches of the businesses that make up uh, the, um, the equestrian uh, organisations. So the equestrian organisations can be split into uh, non-thoroughbred and thoroughbred. So I'll just chat to you a little bit about the non-thoroughbred side of the industry. So that's non-racing and uh, non-thoroughbred horses. So um, we have British show jumping, that could be anything from junior and senior classes from 85 centimetres right up to 160, which is what you'd see on the TV. And the unaffiliated side of that would be um, on a smaller, uh, lower level, so 30 centimetres for uh, novice riders and novice ponies right up to 110. British dressage, again, junior and senior classes that go from prelim uh, right through to senior Grand Prix classes and unaffiliated classes that are not part of British dressage, but still run competitions. They are from prelim to medium. British uh, eventing also have junior and senior classes right from BE80 right up to advanced, which is badminton that you'd see on the television. And again, unaffiliated classes at a lower level. British carriage driving, uh, junior and senior classes, and that would be uh, competitions with a horse and cart. And there's another affiliated side of that as well. And then Pony Club uh, have various competitions for uh, under 25s, um, rallies, camps and things. Uh, the adult version of that would be riding clubs. And these are, that's not a definitive list of everything that's in the non thoroughbred industry, but it's just to give you an example of what might be involved in those organisations that sit underneath the overarching umbrella that is British Equestrian or Horse Scotland. Non thoroughbred industry is also made up of the native pony industry or the native pony uh, breeding side and showing side of things. So uh, the, the, in England, Ireland, Scotland and Wales, we have an abundance of native ponies. Uh, Shetlands are just an example that's shown in the top right hand photograph there and the bottom picture is a, a picture of uh, some Highland ponies being shown at the Royal Highland Show and a Highland pony there as well. So that's a, a big um, and growing part of the industry. The non thoroughbred breeding industry can also, the non thoroughbred industry also includes breeding. So that could be anything from sport horse breeding. So you see a young horse jumping over a fence loose before it's actually been broken to ride. Uh, and I say down to, not um, for any other reason that's at the bottom of my screen, but uh, pony breeding, so native pony breeding uh, and anything that is non-thoroughbred um, from the breeding side makes up the non-thoroughbred. Equestrian tourism is also an area that there are a lot 
of um, growth in recently. The Checking Riding Society of Scotland are the kind of overarching umbrella uh, that, that encompass businesses that provide riding holidays. So that could be one hour hacks up to uh, week long rides, for example, from one side of the country to another. Uh, so the nice photographs of Scottish scenery there where people maybe uh, go on a short, a short trek or a long hack and, and stay in different places each night. So moving on then to the thoroughbred industry, it's made up of breeding and sales and it's um, wholly um, centred around breeding resources. So the National Stud and others around Newmarket are the kind of main focus for thoroughbred breeding in the UK. Um, and that would be breeding, breeding flat racehorses and also national hunt horses. So that's horses that ride uh, race over fences. And the two main thoroughbred or what we call the bloodstock industry sales are at Newmarket and Doncaster. So the photograph at the bottom there of the staff at the National Stud, some of the stable staff, and the photograph at the bottom right there is um, one of the sales in the south. So bloodstock sales are um, quite a fancy affair and a lot of money would, would go through, um, through those. So that's just some photographs of um, thoroughbred uh, establishments. So we've got a, a thoroughbred uh, photograph of stables at the top there, National Stud photograph at the top right, um, and that's Floors Castle at the bottom. So that's Floors Castle uh, stables, uh, which actually are, are, as of last year, most stables no longer with a bit of a change in family circumstances, but um, big breeders of thoroughbreds in Scotland. So these are the equestrian organisations looking at the equestrian businesses that make up um, the non-thoroughbred and thoroughbred industry. We can split those into kind of horsey businesses, if you like, and then ancillary ones that kind of support the horse businesses. So on the non-thoroughbred side, we've got riding schools, livery yards, studs, uh, dealing in sales yards that are uh, horses through the doors and, and selling to clients, competition yards and competition centres. Uh, veterinary centres that focus wholly on horses, um, holiday centres and equestrian tourism we touched on, welfare and rehab centres and then educational establishments, for example, colleges. And then the thoroughbred industry that actually have horses on site would be the racing yards, flat and national hunt yards, studs where horses are bred, the sales and then we have various retraining of resources centres around the country. So the ancillary side that people might not necessarily think of first when they think of working with horses would be the supporting things that we couldn't do without keep, keep horses. You need all these ancillary, facil uh, facil ancillary uh, businesses. So feeding, bedding uh, and forage companies, tack and rider clothing, looking after grass, the vet, the farrier, the dentist, uh, therapists, uh, both traditional, so physiotherapists and also alternative practitioners um, that maybe do massage, for example. Uh, course, course builders and designers, that's for show jumping and uh, eventing, uh, arena construction, horse walker, um, stables, shelters, so it's, um, the hiring companies and also online booking technology. So these are all part of supporting businesses that make up the equestrian industry. So why might you choose to work in the industry? Uh, each area of the industry is so diverse and that it has something different to offer. So you wouldn't go into a particular area and find it was the same in, an, in another area. So that could be the non-thoroughbred or thoroughbred, or it could be various areas within the non-thoroughbred side, all would be very different. But some of the reasons that you might choose to work in the equestrian industry would be that it's rewarding. And you might learn something new every day. You maybe want to turn your career into a hobby. You might want to work outside. Um, Travelling and meeting new people is um, a really good part of the job. Uh, opportunities for career progression and job security. Uh, set holidays and set hours for work. Um, so different areas of the industry would be different and if you wanted set hours then maybe you don't want to work in a yard with horses where there could be an emergency that keeps you on later. If you wanted a job with set hours then it might be that you went into for example equine nutrition where you um, work from nine until five. For entering the industry you might want to enter as a volunteer to start with so the SSPCA talked a bit about uh, volunteering that's a really important um, part of developing your um, experience and knowledge before you enter the business the enter the, the industry as a, either an employee or a student. Um, you could go in through the academic route which would be full or part-time employment. You could do an apprenticeship and that basically means you're training on the job for a qualification so we have what's called the modern apprenticeship scheme. You might have private training providers, so that could be riding schools, it could be training from British Horse Society exams on your own horses, or it could be straight into a job um, where you maybe already have uh, a qualification or experience in equestrianism. 
and then progressing within the industry, there are um, an abundance of continuous professional development opportunities um, and looking at uh, career progression uh, via promotion. So you could look to get yourself promoted in order to, um, to, get, okay, to progress. So this is by no means a definitive list of job opportunities, but it's just some ideas of what you might be doing um, if you worked in the equestrian industry or areas that you might want to go into. So you could be a groomer or rider, which is very hands on, a coach or an educator, which I guess you would say was um, part of my role, as well as a yard manager, um, nutritionist, a therapist or a welfare officer, um, saddle fitters, uh, saddle makers even, uh, retail, marketing or customer care, if you particularly would like a more office based job, a grounds person that looks after fields uh, or the gallops on a race course, for example, and uh, other opportunities where you're using your transferable skills that you've picked up in another industry. So this is just a photograph just showing uh, some people and this is just focusing on racing, but you'll see here there are various people doing various different jobs So leading up at the races. Um, stable yard at the races, uh, somebody who's about to present a horse, maybe in the pre parade ring, about to be tacked up for the racing, uh, work riders in a yard. So uh, even just within those two or three photographs, there are uh, a variety of different roles that you could enter the, the industry and in racing alone. So in terms of preparing for um, a, a, a course or a, a qualification or a, an employment in the industry, English and maths are your core subjects. Um, biology is certainly useful and IT are useful and that's not to say that other ones wouldn't be, but these are ones that really, really are, are a good focus for you if you were considering uh, doing a horse course or um, potentially looking after animals because of biology is very useful. As a, a kind of attribute uh, that I was to put my hand up and say it was the most important one and um, conscientious, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put that together with reliable because horses need looked after. So somebody who can uh, turn up every day, rain, hail or shine and uh, do the job. Somebody that uses their initiative is important as well. So I'm not waiting to be told what to be done and just kind of looking around and uh, to see what, what might need done and also keen to learn. And it's really important if you are considering a career with horses that you in the meantime and during your career with horses keep fit and well. So uh, plenty of exercise and eating well. And then skills that are required would very much be dependent on the job. Uh, so technical skills can be learned on the job through training. Uh, organisational skills could include, for example, tidiness and interpersonal skills might be things like uh, looking after or, or, or liking talking to people and being able to communicate. And that means talking and listening. So for those of you who are uh, particularly scientifically or technology minded, uh, breeding, equitation, uh, breeding um, advancements would be genetic engineering and foaling alarms. Equitation side of things might be monitoring horse and rider performance, uh, business software, so accounting software, grassland management uh, would be, for example, laboratory, laboratory testing and things, and veterinary uh, might be treadmills and uh, heart rate monitors. So SRUC, we have four full time courses. Uh, we have the National Certificate Advanced Certificate, both run over three and a half days and HNC and HND run over three days and this year we had the new resource care course also over three and a half days and we're about to introduce a BSc honours degree course. So further education courses if you are interested are mostly practical with some theory, NAT 4s and 5s for entry to college um, and you apply to the college whereas higher education courses are mostly theory with some practical and you need hires to get into those and you apply via UCAS. So I've just included in the last few slides some photographs of um, theory classes, which might take a different, um, you know, might look different depending on what classes you attend. Uh, practicals could be in the field. You'll see these students are in a the field there or in the stable. Riding practicals might be jumping or lunging or riding in a group. And we also go on a variety of trips and um, visits to different, uh, different businesses. So that might be single visits, uh, study tours in the UK and abroad with staff accompanying you or work experience, which I know was also mentioned in the SSPC uh, presentation. So these again, just some photographs of visits. That's a visit to a uh, muscular race course, to a haylage manufacturer, stud, study tour in Scotland, uh, racing yards, competition yards. Uh, that was a, a study tour in Holland. And then your vocational qualifications are British Horses Society exams, first aid qualifications, 
safeguarding protecting children qualification and also being able to drive a quad bike or a tractor and those are really good add-ons for a CV for anyone who's looking for a career in the equestrian industry. And then it wouldn't be complete without mentioning our two prize winners from last year, uh, Lucy Phillips who won an H Higher Education Award and Kimberly Gallagher an Equine Winner of the Year Award through Lantra. So we were delighted that we did uh, so well.